The new buzzword in India's growth story is services exports, while India's goods exports clocked just a 7.5% growth in the April-Feb period and actually declined 9% if you only count February over February. India's services exports have shot up 30% in the same April to February period and a whopping 37% if you took February alone. Professor Richard Baldwin, who has written a whole paper for the World Bank, points out that even globally, goods trade peaked in 2008 and is actually falling as a percentage of world GDP. But global services trade as a percentage of world GDP has steadily climbed from 9% in 1990 to 12% of world GDP in 2010 to almost double 20% in 2020. Back to India, another point to note is that India's services exports is not entirely a software story. In fact, in April, December, 2022, software exports grew by 21%, but business services, that is service exports other than software, grew by 38%. Now, among the people who are contributing in a big way to these services exports are the big four, EY, Deloitte, KPMG and PwC. So to discuss what's going right for India in services exports and what are the prospects here, I'm joined by Rajiv Memani, CEO, EY India, Debashesh Mishra, Chief Growth Officer at Deloitte, and uh, Bala Chandran, the partner in charge of managed services at KPMG India. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. Let me start with you, Rajiv. Uh, I mean, uh, we, uh, economists are just stunned. Goods are not doing well, but our current account is in balance because of the services exports. And everybody was saying software will do badly because, you know, US banks and European banks are in a funk. But uh, never mind, our services exports are still growing. What's going so damn right? So, uh, I, I, you know, I, I would say last two, three years have been very strong for uh, software exports for uh, for uh, the entire BPM, BPO, business process services, whatever name you want to give it. And uh, uh, the, the reason for, for that are, are many, uh, Lata, and I, but I would say going forward, uh, given what's happening in the global economy, uh, the growth may uh, reduce slightly, but there will be still strong growth. And the reason, I, so I would say that the growth in services, whether it's software or BPO, uh, will be higher than what is the economic growth. And the reason for that is uh, a lot of change is happening in terms of digital transformation. Uh, and a lot of that digital transformation is happening uh, in countries like India. Uh, India is probably one of the largest uh, contributors to that. Uh, you know, as we went through COVID, a lot of organizations realized uh, that, you know, remote working is not an issue and, and, so whether you're working in Seattle uh, or Phoenix or, or in Bangalore, it really doesn't make a difference. And that accelerated the entire process. Uh, the, the issues that we have on talent uh, globally, I mean, the supply chain on talent. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at uh, in India, I, you know, the, the ability for organizations to scale uh, at, a, at a competitive cost, mm -hmm and deliver high quality service and the availability of talent, especially engineering talent, English speaking talent, mm -hmm. accounting talent, uh, finance talent is very, very high. Okay. So that is also driving uh, driving this, uh, this growth. Okay. So I think this is a tremendous opportunity uh, for India. I think it's a sustainable growth story. It's a great value enhancer to the economy. Mm. But uh, yeah, the growth numbers, uh, you know, will, uh, will depend to some extent uh, on the growth in economy, but mm. because of digital transformation, because of uh, cost challenges, cost optimization that needs to be done, okay. more and more con companies around the world mm. are looking at India as a massive opportunity. Okay, no, I take your point. Actually, the paper I referred to, which was published in the World Bank by uh, Richard Baldwin, he's a professor of international economics uh, uh, in Switzerland, in Geneva. Uh, he also refers to the same thing. It's basically Digitech. Uh, policy never prevented the migration of services, but it was not possible. Now, a lot of intermediary services, as he calls it, like accounting audit, are able to migrate because of Digitech. Now, uh, Bala, on that point, what all is migrating? 
what's new in terms of services that Indians are rendering abroad. We always knew that the Infosys and the TCSs wrote codes for finance companies and banks. But what else are we doing? See, the whole um, non-software uh, in terms of what is happening within the service space has been the growth of finance and accounting, as you were talking earlier, where things have significantly sort of moved and there's a still a significant market left for, for people to sort of catch up. Uh, areas like health services, especially after the, after the pandemic, we have seen a significant increase in health uh, services. Financial services is another area where it is picking up a lot of pace in terms of uh, growth. And uh, last but not least is a significant growth that we're seeing in the, in the digital as well as in terms of media content as well as digital development. Okay. So these are the emerging trends okay. we're seeing as the industry is picking up. Okay. Uh, uh, what about uh, Deloitte itself, uh, uh, Debashish? I'm told that of the big four, you guys have the largest number of people employed to service foreign companies. Can you tell us the growth in numbers itself? And what are the kinds of services that are newly being offered? I mean, what's the new story? Yeah, so uh, Lata, you know, you're right that you know we are the uh, the largest uh, professional services firm, and amazingly, every fourth Deloitte employee on this earth is based out of India. So we are now more than hundred thousand people based out of India, both the USI and uh, the Deloitte in South Asia. And we, it's it's not only the software services, as you mentioned in your opening remark, and all kinds of uh, services are getting uh, delivered out of India. Mm -hmm. We have accounting services, audit services, R and D. Mm -hmm. In fact, the oil services companies are now getting their three D seismic data from oil fields all over the world and getting it analyzed in India and sending back the uh, the results to. Uh, back to their companies. And if you look at it, you know, the, the NASCOM report itself says that more than 50% of the GCCs are non-IT kind of GCCs now. Okay, okay. So, And uh, that's also fundamentally changing because of the talent availability mm. and uh, the kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of a shift that's happening in the Western talent market. Okay. There are a lot of this uh, talent which is not uh, matching the skill set that is uh, available. The job openings are going, uh, you know, uh, they are going open for long period of time. Immigration laws are not allowing to import talent. So as a result, many of these things are getting done out of countries like India. Okay. And that's why the reason for uh, this booming export of services. Fair point. Uh, Rajiv, uh, I mean, I, I believe Eva also has a very large uh, uh, set of people who are servicing foreign companies. Again, the same question to you. Uh, any of the newer services, I mean, I guess you all were also offering software uh, and technology uh, like uh, the, you know, the IT companies. But are there newer things like audit, etc.? I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you tell me what are the newer services that appear to be coming India's way? Yeah, so Lata, we have uh, close to 100,000 people in India. Uh, uh, and uh, between our Indian firm uh, and the global delivery center, mm -hmm. almost 65,000 people in our global delivery center. And that's uh, expanding at a very massive clip. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I think any service that we are rendering globally mm -hmm. today, uh, that potentially can be rendered in India. So if you were to look at financial services, if you're looking at customer journeys, you're looking at actuarial, you're looking at risk modeling, um, uh, you know, you're looking at ob obviously the normal sort of traditional audit, tax, um, you know, diligence, valuations, uh, technology implementations, analytics, uh, cloud migration, uh, the entire uh, thing around AI, machine learning, mm. Uh, so all range of services mm. are being rendered. And these were not done, say, uh, three years back? I think they were being done. I won't say they were not being done, but the scale okay. is changing. Okay. Uh, and I think now people have realized what's the art of possible. Mm. And I would say by and large, and it's true for capability centers, it's true for others as well. Mm. Uh, I think once people start experiencing the talent in India, mm. 
I think the defining point in this is really talent, talent, talent in India. Okay. And once people start experiencing the talent, mm. uh, I would say what manufacturing is to China, mm. what what one experiences when you start manufacturing in China, whether it's the efficiency, is the ports, it's the logistics cost, is the interface with the government, the same thing you experience with services in India. Okay. Once you start experiencing that, mm. then you can, depending on what's the uh, ability of that organization to handle change and how that organization is growing mm. and what the other issues are. Okay. Uh, the ability to transition more and more into India, to look at more and more growth to, through India, to become more competitive, okay. uh, leveraging India, scaling okay. up much more faster. Okay. I think that all that is 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 happening um, is, is what is driving this growth. Uh, what's the rate of growth for uh, this outsourcing activity in EY itself, you would say? I mean, are you all growing at 20% clip, 25% clip? No, I would say it's faster than that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, you know, just to give, and this is my estimate, my, my view is that, that as big four put together, and I think that we are always uh, slammed for various reasons, <laughs> big four put together would be uh, exporting services mm -hmm. in the range of 8 to $10 billion mm -hmm. uh, through capability centers, uh, through their respective sort of firms mm. and i would say and 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 even the 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 uh, accounting firms the uh, you know uh, the other accounting yes. firms large accounting firms indian accounting firms they are also realizing this mm. and they are also proactively engaging with different uh, so it's not just restricted to big four i think big four obviously was was the was started doing this but i can now see that happening across mid sized firms uh, smaller firms special boutique firms that are coming up. And it's a great thing. I mean, a fantastic, it's it's great news for the country overall. Yeah, I was speaking to ASA Accounting, uh, ASA Associates, and they said that, you know, the, in 2022 itself, they plan to recruit uh, 30 people for the, the, their foreign partners, CPAs. They ended up recruiting, needing 70. And this year, they believe they may have to recruit 150. So that's a small company which is saying that uh, growth is much beyond what they expected in the uh, start of the year. Now, both, uh, uh, you know, uh, Rajiv and uh, Debeshesh are referring to this GCC. Just to elaborate to those of you who are not familiar with this uh, abbreviation, they're referring to Global Capability Centers. Basically, it's a subsidiary of a multinational company set up in India to do these kinds of uh, middle level services like offering what they are saying you know quality assurance after sales services uh, uh, accounting audit those kinds of things now uh, i wanted to ask you debishish uh, do you guys also help uh, multinationals set up their own captive centers and if you yes. do is there is there an increase in that also yeah, yeah, the, absolutely. So our, uh, our we have practices that help multinationals in setting up their uh, the global in-house centers or global captive centers, as you call it. And also there is a segment of uh, clientele that we have which uh, may not have that kind of a large requirement. Let's say 200, 300, uh, you know, capacity kind of setup. We also host them in our okay. setup and provide them with that service. Okay. So that, you know, they don't have to have that entire headache of setting up mm. the admin, the processes and all that. So that it, you carve out certain segment of our, uh, you know, resources for them and kind of host in our setup. Okay. That's also something which is coming up in a big way. Okay. Because you know, as you know that there are already some 1400, 1500 uh, GCCs that are present in India mm. and almost every year we are getting almost 50, 60 and there's a NASCOM Deloitte report which says that we'll reach around 2,000 uh, GCCs, but there are many in the uh, in the pipeline okay. who may not have the bandwidth to do a full-fledged okay. setup, okay. which can come to professional services firms like ours. Fair enough. So very quickly, if you can give me a number, like um, you know, when I said 20% to Rajiv, he said way more than that. Uh, at what clip is your uh, outsourcing growing? Uh, both the GCCs that you manage as or, or that you handled as well as in-house. Is it growing at 20, 25, 30, what? No, 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 much more than that. In fact, uh, in last three years, I would say that we have grown, this particular segment must have grown in excess of 50%. Ooh, that's what is telling on the numbers then. Bala, what would your guess be? Uh, I'm referring to both your in-house as well as, you know, uh, if you are hand-holding multinationals to set up their own uh, global captive centers. See, we are no different in terms of what we are delivering to the clients, whether it is a setup to sort of 
on it in terms of doing models like BOTs, which are again has significant sort of, uh, um, market sort of coverage on that one, and in also to sort of stabilize instead of operate. So we also get into the stage of operate as well. Okay. So which means that it becomes more of an end-to-end -end service provider as opposed to focusing on trying to help them on on a specific solution based on. Okay. Okay. In terms of what you're talking about, the growth aspect of it, we have actually seen um, an increase of more than 40% in terms of the, the overall growth, if I sort of have to take at least for the last two years, okay. despite pandemic being sort of one such mm. uh, place where people are expecting things to slow down, okay. we actually saw the, uh, the opposite of exactly. it, where we actually saw a significant demand mm. and our ability to sort of deliver during the pandemic mm. in a complete work mm. offline mode has significantly improved in terms of ability to sort of operate remote. Yes. That has actually increased the confidence into the global market that the clients can actually operate okay. in remote. And people who have been thinking that while outsourcing is a is a huge process to sort of do in terms of managing the operation, mm. they rely on, on, on firms like us okay. to sort of guide them and coach them and implement and optimize the overall operations. Got that. So 40, that is the magical number. 40 to 50% growth over the last couple of years is what you guys are telling me. That's huge. Now, what are the red and the green flags going ahead? Those questions after a very quick break. India's services exports are booming and I have with me Rajiv Memani of EY Debashish Mishra of Deloitte and Bala Chandran of KPMG. Uh, well, three of the big four because uh, between them they appear to be contributing between 8 and 10 billion dollars of services exports, uh, Rajiv Memani tells me. So Rajiv, uh, you know, how does it look going forward? Uh, you were a, a little worried that uh, you know, the, the global slowdown can impact and many of the other people I spoke to in the run-up to this discussion uh, were speaking about worries about how 23 will pan out. But just this morning, one of my sources told me, Ye hafta teen client da ke mere ko jyada order diya. So it looks like, you know, the slowdown is actually making people do more cost cutting. So you tell me, uh, how is the immediate next couple of years looking better or slightly less good 
No, I think they are looking uh, very positive, Lata. I, I think cost optimization and digital transformation are, are trends that will that will go. Uh, but uh, you know, as accountants, we are always trained to be conservative, uh, and uh, and you know, globally, we are seeing uh, uh, massive uh, issues that are there. You look at the outlook of what most technology companies are saying. So I would say that the last three years have probably been the most incredible run uh, that tech companies, professional services companies have had. I do see strong growth uh, in the years to come, in the next three to five years years to come. Uh, the uh, engines will change. Uh, what would be areas of focus will change. Uh, but whether it will be the same uh, growth numbers uh, that everyone has been talking about, that I think that that time will tell because you always you also start achieving uh, scale. Uh, uh, you also start achieving this thing, but it's not so much. I would say don't limit this conversation to a big four growth. I think if you were to look at the entire um, business services industry per se uh, and the captives industry, definitely uh, 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 you know the, the the interesting thing is that more and more whatever people can look at transitioning into India. Uh, I think those things are happening. Uh, a lot of the mid-sized companies who were not, didn't have, or those large Fortune 500 companies who didn't have a presence in India, and a lot of mid-sized ones who didn't have are, are accelerating their presence in India. Uh, a lot of mid-sized banks, financial institutions, uh, consumer companies, retail companies, tech companies are looking at more and more at India. SaaS is going, is, 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 is becoming, and the tech companies in the US are looking at leveraging India in a very significant way. So I would say all those things are uh, are positive uh, for the industry. So I won't be negative or this thing, but you know we have to be mindful of the fact that uh, you know globally, uh, uh, you know we are in slightly uh, uncertain times, and the next few months I think we'll get a better better sense of where things are going. And I I think I look at the the the, the for me the only sort of uh, Thing that I'm more mindful of is, you know, if you look at the Indian tech companies, which are massively competitive, you look at Accenture's global results and what they are talking about, the overall outlook, uh, as compared to what we saw earlier. I think that's slightly different. So you have to be mindful okay. of that. Fair enough. Now that that part is taken. Uh, Debashish Mishra, you know, uh, if you can tell me what kind, I mean, just look two years into the future and say whether the pace can pick up even better than what you have seen. And... The other thing that occurred to me, our data law is just going to be framed. Uh, will those issues be a bit of a bother for foreigners if they are giving you audit and accountancy data, salary data to be maintained? Uh, will the, the, the fact that the law is still not in place be an issue? Will they want some uh, security? No, no, definitely uh, people will be watching out for what are the uh, regulations around that and whether uh, there will be data privacy and uh, those things are sacrosanct to many of the multinationals. But, you know, if you're looking, uh, looking at going forward, the trend that we are observing is that there will be multi-year operate deals. Mm. Many, of the, uh, many of the companies are getting uh, completely outsourcing uh, the operate part of, uh, you know, managed services, operate kind of uh, mm. deals are coming more and more and those will be sticky. They will be stick around for uh, five years, seven years and yeah. with, uh, so, so that, that, that trend will mm. definitely increase. And we are not seeing this as only a cost arbitrage play. Mm. It's actually, a, there is a genuine uh, skill uh, gap in the Western markets mm. where they're not able to, the, the, the workforce is not able to uh, learn and relearn and newer skills. And that's where uh, the companies are forced to actually look towards India. Okay, that's very important uh, that there is uh, something that India offers which they don't have. And then, as you say, uh, what starts with an experiment with some firms then becomes a flood. Uh, Bala, would you want to hazard a, a guess in terms of whether you can continue at that 40% that was uh, delivered over the last couple of years? Sure. Um, so, the, so if, I, if I look at what this is, uh, for example, doing today, it's no longer about managing things individually or within the sort of the companies. They look for expertise to come in. So I think this the panelists have already talked about talent. 
talent, talent, and talent has continued to sort of uh, uh, be the sort of the top on the agenda, and its ability to sort of co-create mm. and co-innovate is going to be a significant step forward as we sort of move forward. And the quality of, and the quality of our engineers and accountants are measuring up. I mean, wave upon as, wave. Exactly. So I think what what's likely to happen is industries and the companies will move away from measuring performances on service level agreements or what we call it as the SLAs or the KPIs towards more in terms of what kind of business insights and outcomes that can be sort of generated. Okay. And that's going to be the future. Okay. They expect more and more organizations, especially in the service providers, to put their skin on the game, okay. to deliver the value that's sort of being sort of looked at also, which means that there has to be an element of uh, a profit sharing or element of motivation to deliver that co innovation okay. and sort of deliver that and the results and the insights, okay. which is going to be a game changer as we move along. Okay. New areas such as, like for example, the ESG reporting, mm. which on transparency law, that's going to be a very big sort of uh, a call that will probably happen in the next probably um, a year or two. Absolutely. We'll see a significant demand for these services. Okay. Got uh, in terms of where the growth to come from. Got that. I, I think the qualitative uh, uh, you know, pathways that you are uh, putting on the table is even more encouraging as are, of course, the quantities that you are talking about. Uh, Rajiv Bala Debashish, thank you very much uh, for joining us and you know, filling the gaps in our understanding of India's services exports story. It's a glorious story for 2022-23 uh, itself, but I mean, 40-50% is what these gentlemen are talking in terms of their own in-house growth. But uh, going forward, it's going to be a quantitative jump because India could be the go-to destination for services like China was for manufacturing. More services and as Bala says, more value-added services and uh, a, a range of things like ESG that Rajiv was referring to. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. This looks like a great India growth story going forward. Thank you for watching.